call the meeting to order and please everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hold on, I gotta unmute Missy again. No, I can do it by myself. Oh, you can now. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying what? Oh, John Welsh is hopping on too. Oh, good. Okay. John Welsh, I'll check him here. And I welcome everyone. I see we're up to 22 participants. I appreciate everyone for participating tonight. Uh, I have not received any questions in the email except about the agenda, but then they did find, they didn't find the agenda on the town website, but they did find it on our website. So that was the only question or comment I had uh, sent to me. Uh, so with that said, if I could get a motion to approve the minutes from August 10th, 2020, please. So moved. Okay, motion made by Bob Raven Seegers. A second. Second. Second by John Corcoran. Second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of August 10th, 2020, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone, aye. Okay. Anyone, anyone opposed? Abstentions, okay. motions carried, thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes from August 24th, 2020 regular meeting? So moved. Okay, Bob raven Seegers again with the motion, a second? Second. Second by John Corcoran, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of accepting those minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, opposed? Abstentions? I abstain. Okay, Michelle. one abstention. Motion carried. Hey, do we have any additions to the agenda? Do we need two thirds uh, approval to add anything to the agenda at this time? Uh, yes, uh, Bob, I have an addition to the agenda. Um, okay, if it uh, please the board, I'd like to uh, change the uh, September 28th meeting date to uh, September 29th, in recognition of the fact that September 28th is Yom Kippur. Okay, second for that motion. I'll second. Okay, Carrie, second for that motion. Okay, uh, any discussion on it? That would be our next meeting. We'll schedule, we're changing it from Monday to Tuesday night. Okay, we need two thirds approval. No more, no discussion. All those in favor then, oh, I'm sorry, well, my mistake, I'm moving ahead. I'll move that to 5D, <laughs> September 28th, regular business meeting to be moved to September 29th, 7 p.m. Okay, so that'll be 5D under recommended actions. Uh, All right. I guess I do, we do need to vote on doing it. Did we do vote on doing it? No, we didn't vote on, move, we have to vote on putting it on the agenda. We didn't do that, right? We just made the motion in a second. Uh, we have a motion in a second, yeah. Okay, so all those in favor of me putting it on 5D, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed abstention? Aye. Okay. Thank you, it'd be 5D, approved the September 28th meeting being moved to September 29th, 7 p.m. Thank you. Uh, item 1C, comments from visitors regarding agenda items. Do we have any comments from our visitors? Going down. See any hands raised? Ray, no. Okay. Last call, comment from visitors on agenda items and read. Seeing none, we'll continue on to the business meeting under a chairperson's report. Uh, first thing under chairperson's report is our capital plan. Uh, we do have a meeting tomorrow night with the Board of Finance uh, to present to them a uh, capital plan. I'm not sure if we'll have a, a full five year capital plan, but we'll have something to give them. And we did get a bunch of information that was mailed out to the board members uh, from our maintenance department as to uh, what we'd like to look at there. And I know Missy, uh, we've had some conversations about how we wanna look at this because we'd like to get our facilities committee an opportunity to take a look at some of these items that the uh, Ray Carlson sent over to us. 
So Missy, do you wanna make a comment on it? Sure, um, I, I asked uh, the principals and also Ray Carlson to provide some input to our capital needs uh, moving forward. For next year, and since we do need to submit a, um, a plan, which these continue to be fluid, we you know recognize that. But for tomorrow night for the Board of Finance, in going through the items that the administrator submitted, as well as Ray Carlson, there are a couple of areas that kind of come to light um, that I think we should look for uh, to do sooner than later. And then the other items, um, I would suggest that the Board of Ed Facility Subcommittee meeting meet to assess and prioritize the rest of the items that have um, come forth. So the couple items that um, we've received that I feel are of importance is the camera upgrades uh, for either middle school, high school, or all grove. We recently completed, as you know, our Seymour upgrades. Uh, Dave LaCour, who is our um, representative of Three Way, which is the, the system that um, outfits all of our schools with the cameras, um, he did a walkthrough and assessment of the middle school, high school, and all Grove school this week. So we're looking at um, an approximation of 35,000 for all Grove school and 49,000 for middle school and high school. High school is in pretty good shape with the cameras. The middle school has older analog cameras, so they would need um, you know, to prioritize their actual um, hard devices as well. So that is uh, one uh, item I would like to bring to the forefront, as well as looking at our doors. And this comes through Ray Carlson, who is the uh, facilities uh, manager frames and hardware at the middle school and high school. So we're looking at um, all doors are either damaged, not working correctly or not code compliant. So and this goes for interior and exterior doors. And I do think we need a further conversation with Ray and perhaps a walkthrough of the buildings to look at those items. Um, however, he did give a $65,000 um, tag on that particular um, expenditure cost. And then additionally, what we will need to look at um, just around the corner is an update to our MUNIS system. And Ray, I'm gonna um, pass the baton to you if you'd like to further give an explanation, please. Basically what's happening is uh, we're running on version 11, 3.21. Uh, MUNIS will no longer be supporting it. We were notified about a year ago. Hey Ray, I don't mean to interrupt, but can you just give an explanation of what we use MUNIS for? MUNIS is, our, is the Board of Ed's operating database. This is where all of our financials, are kept, all of our payroll numbers are kept. This is how we account for all our finances. So it's highly critical for us to maintain um, a good database. Okay, so having said that, we're currently running on, on an older version. It's just like Microsoft Windows. At a certain point in time, it's going to be no longer supported. Um, our, our database will, basically end somewhere around December 31st of 2021. Having said that, we're going to either have to upgrade Munis to version 19 or look for another piece of software. Either way, there's a cost involved with that. I'm throwing a number out there right now about, uh, without getting all the quotes that we're going to need. Uh, hold on, I need to admit somebody. Okay. Um, so right now I'm, I'm estimating minimum $50,000. It could be more, it could be less. Um, I've gotten a price for just the upgrade for the Board of Ed of somewhere around 30, 35. It could run as high as 100 to $110,000 um, for overall, if we were to join, um, have the uh, town join us. That's for Munis. Um, I'm also getting pricing and cost structures in for uh, Infinite Visions as well. Um, the, the town I live in just installed Infinite Vision. I spoke with the current business manager there. Um, they seem to like it. Uh, I'm, I've got a call in to the comptroller, the treasurer of the town, to find out to get their cost structures. It took them the better part of 18 months to do their install. Regardless of the 
software. We're going to have to reestablish new charts of accounts, um, testing, um, evaluating, and making sure that the charts of accounts can roll forward into the um, into the uh, state software. Uh, without being able to roll to the state software, it'd be useless. Uh, we'd be doing everything manually, and you'd probably be, need about another five people in your business office, to be honest with you. So, hey, not trying to scare people, but uh, that that's the honest to God truth. So, Ray, we need a, we need an operating system. Is what I'm saying. So, who wants to talk there? I, I was going to uh, ask a question of Ray. Uh, he did mention something about it, it, it taking uh, 18 months to roll on into the the new system. Now, that would be if we were to go with infinite visions uh, or would it be would it be easier to transition from the old munis to the new munis and not require that amount of heavy lifting it might be regardless of the system they're still going to have to come in and do a chart of accounts but it'll be much easier to map and upload some of the differences between the two if, if we were to go with infinite visions infinite visions is two separate databases one for the town one for the board of it uh, whereas with uh, Munis, you run on the same database, two separate entities within the same database. So you can actually run parallel. I can see their database, they can see mine, because due to security, you can't touch each other's database unless you're at a, a different type of security level. Uh, but overall, uh, my experiences uh, with similar databases, for the, um, one database with multiple entities on it, works better than two separate databases because you're doing constant uploads, imports, exports within the databases. That's my own personal preference. But then again, we're comparing, we're comparing apples and oranges when you're comparing infinite vision, you're comparing um, uh, what uh, Munis. Munis is the Munis. of school and public software. Infinite vision is the uh, Chevrolet, so to speak, of, of public software and it's mostly school software, although the public can, uh, entity can use utilize it uh, as well. Um, again, there's much more, most people think you open the box, plug in the software and you run with it. That's not the case. There are setup structures, roles uh, to be uh, created, um, different types of um, uh, assignments to be done throughout and uh, multiple test alliterations that are done throughout the process. I've done more than 20 implementations of other softwares myself, so I can tell you this much. Some of them can go as little as three months. Some can take 18 to 20 months, depending on what you're trying to do. And it depends on the software that you're trying to, that you're trying to implement. We are relatively simple here in, in uh, East Granby. Uh, we're basically utilizing the board of editors utilizing payroll and the financials um, and some purchasing functions. Um, if I if we move forward, I'd like to expand the purchasing functions. As you know, we are utilizing the payroll. We're, we're outsourcing that. Um, hopefully, within the next four to six weeks, that will that will be hopefully live. We're still testing, um, but um, long story short, without giving you a, a, a systems point of view, um, you, you, we're going to have to do it, or we lose lose the ability to uh, do our finances. Let's put it that way. Do you, do you have a recommendation as to which one we should go we with? Have a meeting next the eighth. I think it's the eighteenth. If I look on my calendar, it, Munis is giving a demonstration to both the town and the board of ed. Um, it's I believe one thirty two o'clock on the eighteenth. Um, Hold on, let me, um, I don't want to move things around here on the screen because I'm afraid I might close out and kill the, because I'm the host, I could kill the whole session here. I don't want to do that. Um, but um, I do have a meeting with the town and Munis is going to do a virtual demonstration of uh, what they can do for us. Um, so, and then I'm trying to, it's on, it's fortunate, but unfortunate the same person, the same sales manager that sets up Munis is curious as to why we're looking at Infinite Vision because he also does the um, setup and the uh, sales for Infinite Vision. So told him it's it's one of the options that we're looking at. So 
it, it is what it is. Ray, I mean, can I ask a question? Sure. Is this um, the cost for the Munis upgrade? Is it shared with the town? Right now, I'm just getting cost structures. Um, if the, the, I know that the town, if they want to do their own, it's probably in the neighborhood of fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Our upgrade is going, going to be just software and testing and evaluation somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty five. This is this is what I'm getting on feedback. Mm -hmm. If we were to do it combined, it depends again on what we do because I've got purchasing finances, um, AR, AP, cash, mm -hmm. payroll is one of them. Mm -hmm. Do we really need all of those? That's one of the evaluations we need to do. Unfortunately, I have about two months, three months to make up the make up to make this decision. And mm -hmm. from a board standpoint, or Missy and I do, let's put it like that. Uh, because we need to we need to start early part of next year so we can get the evaluations finished and get some setup and testing done so that we can do a cutover. The preferred method of the cutover is per quarter or year end, that type of thing. So we need to we need to time it, is what I'm saying. Sure. And one one last question. Uh, 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 one, oh. Oh. John, one last question. I had one. Well, okay, you can go, John. I've already asked a lot of questions. Go, for go, it, John. Ahead, John. go ahead, John. I'm actually asking Bob Ravenseeger and Missy if we're still active in a shared services committee with the selectman's office and the town side. Is that still at all active, Bob Ravenseeger? Uh, it is, although we have been in abeyance for a little time, I guess, probably due to COVID. <laughs> However, this is certainly something that the shared services subcommittee uh, probably would want to take a look at uh, in terms of getting economy of scale uh, with with the with the general government side. When you you know if you throw figures that are you know thirty thirty thousand, that's one thing. But when you throw figures that are six digits, it becomes a whole different ball game. And I think rather than take up much time this evening, I think it's it's just important for the board to be aware of this. And it's you know time to resurrect some you know discussions with the town on you know uh, combined accounting, combined payroll combined combined everything in terms of sharing services and minimizing costs to the town side and to the district side by you know joining together and banding up and, and minimizing costs that's all yeah. certainly <laughs> john i'd like to say that's one of the reasons why i invited the town into uh to to the meeting uh next week I wanted them to. I want them to hear what Munis has to say and what they can offer. Is it expensive? Yes. You're again. You're paying a premium for Munis. I mean, no doubt about it. Um, is it the top of the software? Yes. But Infinite Visions is act technically, from what I understand, much much easier for the user. So they both have their pros and cons. And I'm not trying to sell either one. I just want to make our lives easier and make sure we have something to do our job tomorrow. Yeah, but sure. That, no, that's good. Yeah. What the other thing that I'm looking at, I'd like to throw, even if it's nothing more than a placeholder at this point, I'd like to put a fifty thousand dollar placeholder out there. It might be high, it might be low, but I want to I want to put it on people's radar. That's 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 one of the purposes. Yeah. So you want to you want to use a placeholder of fifty k, say for example, on the capital plan. I, I'd like to throw at least a fifty thousand dollar placeholder out there. And what would you do that for twenty one, twenty two? Um, has to be implemented no later than mid seat mid fiscal year of twenty two. We lose. We have what fifteen months left before we lose support. Because it's it's going to go bye bye on December thirty first, twenty one. This is what so, I'm being told. Now I've heard that. Just like Microsoft, you might be able to get an extension here or there, but I don't want to roll the dice. No, we, we can't afford to lose that for any yeah. length of time. 
Um, I'm not that good with Excel to be able to do all my accounting now. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not enough of Neither it. Neither is Excel. Uh, um, so, yeah, so we, it would probably behoove us to, to, to front load that into the capital plan because we can't go any further back than that. Okay, right. So would that be, so that would be a motion when we get to the point of approving the capital plan? Would we... Well, we can do it now bit by piece and then we'll just approve the total plan. Well, yeah. you're approving the total plan. I just I just want to add a placeholder of fifty thousand in there. Again, it might be as little as thirty or thirty-five. I don't know, but again, I don't like surprises. It's so, better to err on the side of of, of generosity. Yeah, we, yeah. we're taking a hundred thousand out for next year for the gas conversion. So why don't we put the fifty in for next year? And if we you know, get pushed the following year, at least uh, we still have a little bit of time. So you're suggesting you take it from the gas conversion line? We had 100,000 there that we're not planning on doing it now. And if we take that out, and again, it's gonna take some time to work on it. I don't think we should wait till 2021 and make a decision <laughs> to raise pretty proactive that we have this meeting next week with the town to show them what it's all about and to see where we are. But I think we should at least let the Board of Finance see that we are proactive to taking a look at, is it worthwhile to combine our resources? And if we're going to, what's it gonna cost and when are we gonna start? If we put it off to 21, 22, it just seems like we're kicking the can down the road. Uh, you know, I guess we'd like to get the committees together and take a look at it, but that's up to the board to decide whatever you think I'm comfortable with. I, I'd like to interject one thing, regardless of whether the town wants to join join us at the hip, we have to do something from a board of ed side. So that's the other reason why I think it's worth putting it in for 2021 and start exploring it. I mean, yes. I'd love to have us go on one operating bit, but yeah. if they choose not to, we still need to do something. <clears throat> Is the board okay with that for 2021, 50,000? So we'll so present that to uh, Board of Finance tomorrow. Yep, and that would be what would you call that software upgrade, Ray, or Munis upgrade software software upgrade. That but would then it be under the technology section of capital. I mean, we have technology equipment. That's for the okay. schools. So okay. we, yeah, it's not that's really like the Chromebooks. It's not right. It's not you a district. Could, uh, you could put it under technology. Okay, under technology or under where it says facilities capital district, we can put it as a, the, um, you know, district operating system. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that would work. All right. Okay. All right, so do we need a motion, Bob? Do we need to, or we just make that change to the plan and then vote on the plan? So well, it's up to the board. I'd like to make the change and then just vote on the whole thing. Yeah, it's fine, that's fine, okay. Any objections yeah. to that? No, no objections, Bob. Okay. Let's take a look at another item. Or Missy, do you have any? I know we don't have these prioritized, and I know Missy wanted the uh, facilities committee to take a look at them. So what we're doing is putting some numbers in here for the Board of Finance, but we may have to massage them or move them around a bit after uh, the facilities puts a priority to these. I would think certainly the Munis software upgrade is a priority. I mean, that's something we have to look at. Right. Uh, the other items. You know, Missy, is there anything that you think needs to be up for 2021 or? I do. 122 or any board members have some thoughts? Yeah, and, and I'm also looking at what we have for 2021. We have 25,000 for repair to tennis courts. We just did our repairs last year mm -hmm. and the maintenance plan is about 1,800 per court. Um, you know, we have four courts or, you know, we're looking about a little over 7,000. Um, but I don't believe we need to do it this year. We can put um, the seven or eight thousand into another year. So I do believe we can take that twenty five thousand out for the twenty twenty one school year. Yeah, definitely. We've, we've definitely spent, uh, and we're moving to thirty thousand. Yeah, it looks great. Grove over to twenty twenty one, correct? The auditorium upgrade. We're moving it from last year to this year. Thirty thousand. Am I correct, Missy? Uh, that is correct. Sorry, I lost track of what year we were in for a second. Yep, so for everyone else, we talked last meeting of taking the gym auditorium upgrade and stage curtains uh, that we didn't do last year and uh, move it to 2021 and do it this year. 
Hmm? Okay. All right. Bob. John. Are we removing the hundred thousand on the gas conversion now? Are we just deleting the gas conversion from our plan? For now, it appears to be yes. Uh, we see things seem to be working well. They're managed well. Uh, our heating and air conditioning company seems to have everything going. So uh, we haven't looked at any any new incentives coming our way. So right now. I don't know whether we want to just delete that or just move that out five years. Uh, you know, that that's an item, John, it's a good point. It may come if the place, if that whole thing failed sometime where we'd have to do something. Right. So I don't want people to lose sight of that thought. Then we should leave it in as a plate holder a couple of years out. Yeah. It, it's just a big number to have as a placeholder. I mean, if you, you know, if you put a number in there that was, you know, to revisit it, so to speak, to have, you know, a, a, another consult, whether or not the, uh, the system can, can go in. I, I can't remember. Didn't we, didn't we expend like 10 grand just to... You're coming in broken, John. Uh, but but you're right. I don't think we need a number there. But how about if we just leave a uh, term there? I guess we do. Gas, gas conversion. So that the yeah, I know. I'm not going to call. What? You're going to call in, I think. Who does? John. John will, John will call in. Oh, John will call it. Okay. okay. I, I think when we have our facility subcommittee meeting, we can bring up the conversion and, and talk it through with, um, you know, both F and F and Ray Carlson as well to get a much better idea of really where we are now with that. A hundred thousand enough. I mean, uh, no. And actually that was your good point, Ray. It was probably 600,000, but that was 0% yeah. financing and that whole program now is totally different anyway. You're right. So we don't have a number. So I agree with John Welsh. Uh, we don't want a number there, but I, I think we want people to realize that coming down the road, we may do that need to do that conversion to natural gas, which we do have the ability to do it. I just I just did a boiler at Vernon before I left, and I spent eighty thousand dollars on one boiler. Yeah, no, you're right. I think that a hundred thousand is looking more like a placeholder than anything yeah. else. So I'd be comfortable taking the number out and just uh, leaving it in there. High school, middle school, gas conversion, or you just want to scrap the whole thing? Words choice. I just don't want people to lose sight of we may need that to happen someday. I, I think it should remain just so so that we don't lose sight of it, but uh, maybe uh, separated from a specific number. Well, there's a um, Bob. There's a section at the bottom of the document that says total, not funded, or you know, we maybe we can put it towards the bottom of the list as a plate, you know, as a um, I don't know if that's yeah that that lower tier that's not a part of the spreadsheet you'd want to have it maybe down below where you list a bunch of things that are perhaps not uh a specific earmark but something that is, is i don't know yeah there's a whatever that area that's means. A good point yes. Bob. that's a good projects point. noted by board of ed but not included in plan oh, yeah. yeah at the very bottom yeah high school middle school gas conversion we'll put it there that's a good spot Okay. So what I do think that um, we should put in to present the plan moving forward is uh, looking at camera upgrades and a category for school safety. So or or facilities, but I I'm reluctant to identify any one of the items without the subcommittee first kind of vetting everything, assessing and prioritizing. Okay. I would like to interject. You really don't want to discuss safety issues in the public. That should be in. Right. That right. should be in. Uh, well, no, it's it's more like cameras. Okay. Camera upgrades. And then the so the camera upgrades, like I said, it's the number that we got today is thirty-five thousand for all Grove Middle School, High School. 
from what Ray Carlson was able to do uh, with his walkthrough and uh, provide us, you know, the range is from, uh, you know, $3,000, $9,000, and the most expensive would be $65,000, which was the, um, the correction to all of the interior and exterior doors at the middle school and high school. Well, should we put them in 2021 if we're taking out the 100,000 anyway? That's kind of around the same number total. Um, and then, I mean, that's kind of assuming they're all a priority and then you kind of determine the priority later. Yeah, it would be definitely a priority if it's, if it's when you're dealing with doors, you're dealing with security. So I think that's always something that's gotta be front burner, right? I would agree. And like I said, without actually sitting down and talking and, and really assessing it. Um, but, you know, clearly from what I can read and my, you know, quick conversations with Ray, I would see that as um, one of the higher priorities based on the other items that were provided. So then we need to uh, set up a, a shared services for Munis and we need to set up a facilities to deal with the security upgrades, both the doors and the cameras and what have you. Yes. So I guess what I'm suggesting is if we have 50,000 for camera upgrades, we can then in the yes. determine which, you know, school would get that priority and then 50 or 60,000 for um, facilities upgrade. And again, the subcommittee can vet through the items provided to us to prioritize. Sounds good. I agree. Okay, that does sound good. Where do you want to put those numbers? Well, go ahead, Missy. I, I was I was just going to suggest for district we can uh, just title it, um, you know, camera upgrades. I mean, that's essentially what it is. Okay. And then, um, I'd probably leave it under district again for uh, facilities. Um, security or uh, priorities and upgrades, facilities, priorities and upgrades. Okay. You know, that does because we don't want to be too specific on anything that has to do with like uh, things having to do with security because you don't want to um, clue people in that might have, uh, you know, want to kind of broach those security uh, regimes that we set up. Okay, so camera upgrade, did you say it was at 30,000, Missy? Um, I would put 50,000, that's the high end. Okay. And how about the facilities, and priorities, and upgrades? I would put sixty-five thousand, as that is the most um, expensive um, itemized cost right now that I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm just looking at 2021. If we're starting to put a lot of dollars in that, we've taken a hundred out, but we've put in 165 back in. Actually, we also took out the tennis courts. So about 50, we got about 50 over more than we had before. Can anything go into 21, 22? I mean, this year we're already started. I don't know if there's just anything because we don't have a whole lot in the next category for 21, 22. We don't have much of anything there. Well, perhaps the item that we were just talking about with the doors, you know, that's for all of them. Perhaps we can prioritize within that, you know, and do half next year and then half the year after. That would make, that would probably make some sense because. And that would bring the numbers for 2021 down close to the, the range that they were at before we moved those items out. 
Okay, so you want to take facilities, priorities, and upgrades out of 2021 and put half of it in 21-22 and the other half in 22-23? Is that what you're saying? Um, half in 2021 and half in 21-22. So put 33 in each. We okay with 33 in each? It gives us 66 because by 22-23, you know it's going to be $1,000 more. Yeah. Be okay with that? 33 Sounds good, Bob. I mean, at least gives us a start. The Board of Finance just wants to have some idea. They don't want to be dumped on last second that uh, we tell them we need something that we never knew about before. So that, that does give us some leeway and it gives them an opportunity. I think, Missy, if we show the Board of Finance or make or if you tell them some of Ray's comments and say the facilities committee is going to look at it, I think they'd be comfortable because then at least they'll know what, what's on the list. Do you have any thoughts on that? You know, and, and to be honest with you, Ray was uh, running from start to finish, you know, all summer, helping us open school from the facilities end, so. Yeah, I think everyone understands that. I mean, I think uh, all the time has been spent on things that we never thought we'd have to spend time on until this year. Uh, so it gives us a good feeling of where we are this year. The board, anyone, uh, got anything you want to add to this? Is this something we can support for now? I think it looks, so. look, looks good, Bob. Okay. Uh, I don't know, John Welsh in the past, do we need a motion to approve the five year plan or plan presenting to the Board of Finance? I, I guess we've got we it under. To, yes. Yeah, we've got it under recommended actions. Okay. If there's no other corrections, we'll leave it at that until we come to a vote on it. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to? Good, Bob. Sounds okay. good. Okay, good. Then we'll move down to. I guess the only thing I other thing I have under my report is uh, tomorrow night. I said Board of Finance uh, will present the capital plan, and also we'll be presenting. Uh, we sent them the letter for the money left over from last year uh, to get into a not elastic fund for COVID expenses. So hopefully they'll approve that tomorrow night. Okay, moving to item three, superintendent's report. Misty? Uh, yes, we are going to start um, with in the, um, like to introduce Mike Pasqua. Mike is our athletic director at the high school and also serves as our health and physical education teacher at Seymour. Um, at the last Board of Education meeting, uh, it was requested that there be an update on athletics. And uh, I think, you know, athletics right now, if you even listen remotely to the news or what's going on, is a huge hot button right now. So Mike is going to do his best to give an update as it stands at this moment in time. Thank you, Missy. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I first want to say thank you to all the families, coaches, student athletes uh, for their flexibility during this time, um, getting to learn new protocols and putting them in place without much notice. So thank you for that. Um, I'll be referencing the updated CIA, CIAC fall plan. Um, I attached it to the East Granby High School uh, website. So you can go on the athletics tab on there and you can find this plan if you didn't go to the CIAC uh, site itself. Um, so the fall sports We've been doing uh, conditioning since Saturday, August 29th, um, 30 minutes of conditioning, 30 minutes of skill work um, in cohorts of uh, 10 student athletes or less. And that's going to last through September 20th. Um, so that means, therefore, on September 21st, that's when full practices uh, may begin. That is next Monday, so a week from today. Um, on September 18th, uh, CAC is actually going to reevaluate Connecticut's metrics. So this might be changing. Like Missy said, it's all fluid. Um, game and contests right now are scheduled for October 1st. Um, I have posted all the schedules on East Granby High School Athletics website. So if you go under the tabs for each sport, you'll be able, be able to see those um, drafts of those schedules right now. All right, in uh, the CIAC fall plan, they do break down dates for you. There's a nice chart that tells you for each sport on when each can start. Um, so we are in those 10 cohort practice days, and on 21st will be full team practices this week from today, like I said before. Um, contests um, have been scheduled through NCCC. 
Um, I think they did a good job on regionalizing the, the uh, schools. You can, um, so for cross country, for example, we're within six schools. So we're within Canton, Granby, um, HMTCA, Southfield, and Windsor Lock. So then girls and boys soccer, we're in a group of seven schools. Uh, they broke it up basically by the river is what they did. Uh, so again, those, those schedules are posted online. So if you wanna see them. Um, going more into the plan, um, they do break down into each sport. Um, so cross country, there's a whole section just for that sport. And then again, on for soccer and swimming. Um, but for the most part, uh, September 21st, the practices can be extended to 90 minutes from 60 minutes. Uh, September 26th, they can go to a full two hours on those practices. And again, just keep in mind, it's all fluid. This can change if the metrics change. Um, so scrimmages, if we do uh, have some scrimmages, they can start on September 26th uh, for soccer, for example. I, I like how CIAC is putting out this plan for, they're focusing more on uh, participation than winning. Uh, they did mention that there's gonna be a tournament at the end of the year, but it's gonna be a non-elimination tournament. So all, scores would be, all schools would be invited for that. Um, that wouldn't take place until well into November if they have it. Um, towards the end of the plan, they go into additional considerations for fall season. I'll tell you how we're um, tackling that as a district. Uh, they do have a fan and spectator attendance um, consideration. Uh, we will be talking about that in a committee we are forming um, to discuss all of these athletics uh, with COVID-related things. Um, for facilities, I just want to thank the town. Uh, they came out this week and rolled the soccer fields. We have some mold problems on our lower soccer fields, so I do want to thank them for flattening that out. And then we have a, um, a schedule for our custodians to continue that uh, once a week with a smaller roller. It's good for them to do it in the beginning um, just to get it really flat so then we can maintain it throughout the season. Um, so thank the town for that and the custodians for maintaining those fields down there. Um, we did purchase uh, two out, outdoor hand sanitizer stations. So we have them outside for practice and we'll have them for athletics. Um, so the kids have ample um, time and, and opportunity to have that. Um, we do have a self-screening protocol we put into place. Um, every student athlete and coach gets self, they self-screen before they come to practice. Um, I provided everybody with a Google form to use or a, a physical copy. Um, my job in the beginning of practice is once I get the students outside, um, I look at all those forms and make sure there's no symptoms of COVID. Um, if anybody answers yes to any of those, they are sent home for the day. Um, coaches are required to wear face masks during practice. Um, student athletes are not when they are um, doing exercise, but if they're doing like chalk talk or um, discussions, they have to put that mask back on. Um, they did talk about in the plan for um, the locker rooms. Um, so I did come up with a protocol for the locker rooms. So we, I had to measure 12 feet in each locker room. Um, so that only puts three or four students in each locker room at a time. Um, we're doing the one in one out uh, pr protocol. So one student comes out, uh, next student can come in. Um, while they're waiting, uh, we do have, I am supervising the gym um, when they're socially distant wearing masks in the new gym. I spoke about the COVID-19 advisory committee before. Um, so I am looking for a couple more parents to be involved on that. So if you are interested in being on that committee, uh, please reach out to me, um, contact me through email, be the best. Um, that committee is basically set up to uh, take a look at all the metrics of COVID, the best practices um, and make decisions regarding athletics. Uh, they did mention that towards the end, about transportation. Um, we will be providing a waiver for transportation if a parent would like to uh, drive their student to contests as well, so they won't have to take the bus if they want to. Um, so that's the end of the plan. Um, I'll, I'll be staying on through the meeting, so if you have any questions. Thank you, Mike. Any more Thank you very questions? much. Any very comprehensive. Seeing none, appreciate your input, Mike, and I know it's pretty busy from day to day and minute to minute how things have changed. Okay, Thank okay. you so much. Thanks, Mike.
And if anybody is looking for his email, it's M P A S Q U A at eastgramby.k12.ct.us. If we have any parents on who are looking to uh, serve on that advisory committee, that'd be fantastic. All right, uh, moving to reopening. We are in school and we are happy to be in school. You know, and, and the fear, it actually feels like we've been in much longer than we have. Um, you know, I, I know administrators have taken a lot of time and teachers are pulling aside kids. And, you know, there's a general, um, there was certainly some kind of anxiety and kind of walking into the unknown those first few days. Um, but kids definitely seem comfortable. Um, it looks like a school, it sounds like a school. We just have, you know, certainly far less um, students. I thought it'd be interesting to share what our numbers are, are looking like in our buildings in terms of kind of who's in distance learning and who are we looking in the hybrid. Um, so distance learners remember right now are those families that chose to do distance learning five days a week. So these are children that are not in our school building at all. Um, so they are not participating in the hybrid. Our percentage ranges between 15 and 20%. Um, the lowest 15% is at the high school and 20%, our highest percentage is at um, All Grove School. And, you know, I didn't look specifically by grades, but I do know that we have a number of kindergartners who um, have, you know, chosen the distance learning path. We also have 19 homeschool children. So those are children that are no longer on our rosters, but I think it's really important because um, 14 of them, I believe, are from the beginning of the year. So this is definitely as a result of a kind of our learning model and, you know, families that chose, you know, that this is best for their family at this time. Those percentages and numbers do ebb and flow. So we have seen uh, some children rejoin our hybrid um, and we have seen some um, move to distance learning and it's for a variety of reasons one way or another. So, um, you know, we have, um, like I said, between 15 and 20% of our kids are distance learning. So what is what does school look like? What's been going on the first few days? Um, at the high school, um, this is from Tony, our students are engaging daily in synchronous, which is just kind of a, a long way of saying uh, learning at the same time. So it's our in-person learners and our remote learners and asynchronous learning. The activities that they are participating in allow students to exhibit technological and um, intellectual agility. Students are continuing to demonstrate proficiency by smoothly maneuvering over multiple platforms while demonstrating continuing mastery of skills. We are extremely impressed by both students and staff at how quickly we as a school community have come together in order to continue learning and achieving. Classrooms are alive again and we couldn't be happier. At the middle school from Tim, students and teachers um, of course are wearing masks and we're all maintaining our um, social uh, distancing, distancing. We have been adjusting to our new routines for safety and instruction uh, very well as a community. The movement from class to class has been highly structured and sequenced to ensure safety and spacing of students. Our teachers continue to work hard and excel as they learn the new techniques to deliver instruction to both in-school learners and at-home learners at the same time. Our students have shown a high level of engagement and effort um, both from home and in school. At Seymour School, the teachers have focused instruction um, early on to address social and emotional learning. Students are reading, writing, and reflecting about dealing with a problem, communicating effectively, having a growth mindset, and setting goals for the future. Our hybrid model is allowing for the entire class to come together five days a week in person or online. Google meets throughout the day, address academic and social curriculum goals. At All Grove School, our reopening plan has been especially adaptable to creating an environment for a safe and supportive plus robust academic program. 
The students have adjusted remarkably well to the hybrid model, and we are so pleased that our remote learners are able to join their classmates multiple times um, per day, every day. Our student support services is currently servicing students both in person and remotely. The department is in the process of scheduling evaluations and conducting meetings that were paused or delayed from last spring due to school closure while simultaneously complying with evaluation timelines for new referrals and reevaluations that are due in the fall. You know, so overall, it is so wonderful to have our students back. We have had excellent results in school and on the bus adhering to all safety measures. You know, I'm thinking back to some of the concerns with, you know, the kids are going to really struggle with this. They're going to struggle with that. The kids are doing marvelous. I can tell you firsthand, I've been riding the bus for two weeks, um, both to and from school. And I have had, you know, great conversations with children, um, except for the, the ones that determined amongst themselves that I must be at least 70 years old. So we had to have a little follow up with that. So in the end, they did come to the conclusion that I was older than all of their parents, but younger than their grandparents by a few years. So you got to love the little ones. <laughs> um, but but really, it's been a wonderful um, opening. You know, we know we have some situations. We know we're going to have hurdles. We know we're going to have bumps in the road. But our staff and our students um, are resilient. I said to a few teachers that I've popped into some classrooms. I actually had goosebumps because... Our children are just so fortunate. Our teachers, their skill set and their commitment to fully educate our children at home and the children in front of them. We are blessed with great technology to help us. Um, but I will say the planning is massive and our teachers want to do nothing but the best. So, you know, all of their effort are going into, you know, planning for, um, you know, all of their children, regardless of where they're learning from. Great. Hey, hey, Missy, it doesn't surprise me that the kids are, are doing really well with things yeah. like masks and social distances and things like that, because um, after all, they're far more adaptable than, than people who are older. And so uh, just as with technology, I think that they'll actually be better than the grownups. <laughs> here, here. It's true. Okay, so um, and the, the final report I have is that we did, um, we were able to hire uh, to replace Carol Goff, our beloved and newly retired uh, K-5 um, art teacher. We have a person by the name of Polly Voglis um, with 13 years of experience in a very similar district. Um, she will be our new um, art teacher, so I'm very excited. Uh, the interview committee is uh, is very thrilled and we think she's a great fit for our district and our community. Wonderful, welcome. Very good, very good, thank you. Excellent. And, and I will just say, kind of a side note, when I happen to look up, um, there are 42 openings right now in the state of Connecticut for art teachers. <laughs> wow, so, and, we, and we got one. We got her, yeah. We have a good one coming on. Good, wonderful. I, I was gonna say, Missy, yeah, thank you, because I know districts are struggling with open positions everywhere. And I'm, I know we have very talented uh, bus monitors now with you riding the bus every day for two weeks. Mm -hmm. but, but I know you're not getting any applicants for that. And I'm, I'm glad everything's going smoothly. And you're right. I think it's gone smoother than we thought. The kids uh, with the mask, everyone is glad to be back in school. And I think they're all cooperating. and. Again, I think everyone realizes we're all in it together and the kids are easier to adapt to it than the adults are. I'm not, not our staff, our staff's been terrific, but many adults in this country have been slow to react. So I'm pleased with how everything's going and we're looking around the state. Uh, we see that Connecticut's still in a good place and hopefully we'll keep uh, working in that direction. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess just one other side note I'll add is we are in the interview process for the grade five opening. So we've, we've had interviews and we are continuing, um, you know, with that process as well to find the, the best candidate. Thank you. Thank you much. Okay, moving down, item four, committee reports. Uh, we have anything new tonight from the policy committee? Not, not to my knowledge. Not, not tonight. Nothing new on the budget. Ray is going to do the end of the year financials with us a little bit later. 
I don't know if anyone has anything else on that. We did a five-year plan. Uh, curriculum, Bob, anything of curriculum? I, I know that Marjorie Light had a, had a meeting today at 315, um, but I was not aware of it until after uh, it actually had gone to my son's email. So I didn't know about it until after the meeting was well, well along. Okay. Uh, facilities, I know we're going to be getting the uh, facilities committee to take a look at all these requests again uh, and move on with that. And John's not here tonight to report on anything new from the last facilities meeting. Uh, negotiations, uh, we are going to have a special meeting to uh, go over and approve the uh, MOU we have with the teachers uh, over the COVID uh, MOU for them. And we'll, I think, I think Missy sent it out to everyone today or that it Missy today or yesterday. So everyone has a copy of it to take a look at it. And I guess they voted to approve it already. So it's up to the board to approve it. John, anything else you want to add on negotiations? No, thanks. Communications, uh, Michelle, you have anything you want to add on communications? Um, I guess I just would, without Lynn being here, the, uh, I, did, but I did see emails um, that Lisa uh, had reached out to Lynn for the announcement that um, Lynn and the committee had drafted to see mm -hmm. if we could have it added to the Let's Talk Turkey by the deadline that was the other day. So. From the email that I saw, it sounds like they did get um, the announcements and, and it was the uh, statement of all of our new um, administrators, the letter that Lynn, that the committee had drafted. So I believe that that'll be announced in the town newsletter. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Nothing else on committee reports. Move down to item five, recommended actions. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the capital plan as presented tonight? And if we make up, we'll do the same thing. Uh, there's a motion from Bob. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Michelle. Any further comments or questions on it? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of approving that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. Okay. Item 5B, uh, 2020 year end financials. Uh, Ray, I'll let you take over on this. Start as you can see on your attachments here, um, as part of your packet, um, we ended the fiscal year 20, uh, 1920, um, <clears throat> with a total expenditure at as of, oh, I'm going to say about two weeks ago. Uh, of about of six, excuse me sixteen million twenty eight thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars and eighteen cents expended. In addition to that, we have encumbered five hundred eight thousand nine hundred thirty six thousand nine hundred thirty six dollars. Uh, what this means is those are still our obligations. If you're not uh, sure what encumbrance means, um, available budget at this time is four hundred forty two thousand one hundred ninety four dollars. So what this is where we're coming up with the full, we'd like to take that full 2% that you saw in the letter, and we'd like to move that full 2% over into the non-lapsing account. Um, the town will benefit from about conservatively 110,000. I'm going to estimate it's gonna be closer to $150,000 going back to the town. And having said that, you'll see as part of the um, financials, I added a column for reasoning on the side and many of those, um, it's, it, I'm, I'm not calling it justification, but much of it is uh, what I would call a cost avoidance. Uh, we pulled some of it back out of, uh, you'll see on the first line, for example, we pulled some voice grant and we applied it directly to our budget this year um, because we could absorb it. I, don't, I didn't wanna hit the, the choice grant with every ounce of uh, dollars we could. There are a few others in here. Uh, example, um, transportation. We put 125,000 back in our pocket because of COVID related expenses. We still paid the bus company 85% or 80 to 85% of their overall dollars, but we did, there was a, um, a benefit back to the board. Um, same with electricity, overall savings. Um, the high school being the largest savings was 120, um, excuse me, wrong term. It should be cost avoidance uh, was uh, 127,000. Um, those are some of the big hitters that you'll see on there. 
And one other would be the, um, and I'm looking for it at the moment, you'll see um, item three, uh, object 330. This is, could have gone in one of two directions with that. I could have put it back into COVID uh, and not COVID choice. Um, and I did check with some of my peers in CASBO. We could have, I could have replenished some of the uh, items back there, but all, but we chose to put it back in our, and I apologize, I got distracted. Some people were hopping back into the meeting here and I had to admit them and I apologize. Um, but I had a choice. I could either put, replenish some of the choice or put it, uh, or you put it against our professional technical services, which um, Karen's team did for Hartford students that we were supporting internally here um, from our team. I chose to re replenish our, our line item at the moment um, because of COVID. I mean, I'm being very blunt, I'm upfront. I'm telling you exactly why I did what I did. Um, I checked with the auditor before doing it. I could have done it either way. So what I did was legal, um, but I did re replace the expenditures that Karen expended um, all total, we moved about $300,000 into that line from uh, support that Karen did that we got reimbursed for. That, that's, that's a big chunk of what we're putting aside to support COVID. It was $311,000. We're asking for three thirty nine dollars to be put aside into the non-lapsing. So overall, that, that's where we ended up with 2020, uh, 1920 budget. And um, yeah, we, we've reconciled for July. Um, I've sent over the reconciliation today uh, for August. Um, I'll be discussing that tomorrow with Kelly. We've got a minor variance there, but I'd like to hold off on that to see if it flushes out in, in next month. It's about $3,500. It's nothing major. Uh, but I, again, that's where we stand. Checking reconciliations are all done. They have, we've been balancing with them for the last uh, five or six months with no, no issues at all. So. Reconciliations have been going through fairly smooth um, for the last several months. Um, if there are any questions, I'll be, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, Ray, I don't have a question, but a comment. I uh, appreciate all your efforts, uh, your experiences, your expertise, uh, negotiations uh, to work on this. So we, we have something to put into COVID. We have something to return to the community. Uh, your efforts certainly haven't gone unnoticed. It's certainly appreciative. And certainly one thing you did say that we've reconciled for July, but the raise also the whole year, whole past year has been reconciled. So we're all clear with that, where we all remember the issues we had with that last year, which uh, fortunately that Missy put a team together and was able to resolve that, that here we are now right where we're supposed to be. So good job. Well, to be honest, we are working with the auditors right now. We're starting to pull. We, we sent them a lot of stuff. Now they came back with more stuff. <laughs> so, um, we've, got, we've got a lot of uh, detail that we need to pull for the auditor now. So, uh, And being with the COVID situation, it, it has not made it any easier because we're trying to pull it and send it to them, whereas they used to sit in a room and we'd review it and just go on and we're done. Now we have to take things out of, out of books, send huge files, upload them, copy them, scan them. So there is a lot of extra work being done. We may bring them in one or two days over the next several weeks to try to smooth out some of that process just to get it done. So, Okay. I, I have a question sure. and a comment. Um, no, uh, Ray, great work on the numbers. Um, and, and I'm assuming this is our final document of the year, the closeout. Is that correct? Year yes. in financials? As of so, right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just because it's a final document, mm -hmm. just would suggest, I mean, and I could be wrong in reading it, um, that in the under the reasoning area, there may be a few typos, but it might it might be me that <laughs> I'm not um, some of the is it avoidances or advances? COVID related. It's missing the eye. Um, and then, you know, they're um, under reimbursement, tuition reimbursements, um, just like, at spe I, I don't know if, uh, you know, Excel has spell check on it, but 
And I think COVID is an acronym and it shall be CAPS. Okay. Little, but I'm not the numbers person. I'm <laughs> proofreader. Obviously, you can there, tell I did copying and pasting because it, it did. Yeah, I know. Very good job, though. <laughs> I just, uh, my eye goes right to those. And I'm a numbers I, guy. <laughs> you're the numbers guy. <laughs> but since it's a final document, I would like it, you know, to I'll represent. I'll clean our, it up. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anyone else? I see no other comments. If I could get a motion to approve this with those, I uh, with the spelling corrections put in, I'd appreciate a motion. So moved, Bob. Okay, Bob Raven Seegers with a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, Michelle with a second. Okay, any other discussion or questions? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor of approving 2020 year end financials signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carried unanimously again. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, I see, Ray, approving August 2020 financials. Yeah, and there's a typo at the top of the header, I noticed. It's a, <laughs> it, it should read, Ray, uh, financials August 2020. Oh, okay, I see that. Uh, I keep forgetting that that th that header is hidden, and I have to go on the back side and fix it. So mm -hmm. my apologies. Uh, I'll fix that also. I need a magnifying glass to even read it, but I see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I have hard copy here, so it stands out real quick. <laughs> uh, but overall, you can see we we're we're just now dropping in some encumbrances. If you were to look at this now, you'll see about four or $5 million encumbered. We're seeing a lot of the blanket orders are being entered. A lot of um, a lot of the big things are starting to be be done now. Electricity's, uh, we've just encumbered uh, most of that today or yesterday. Uh, there should be some additional salaries that'll be encumbered in there as well. So we're, we're, we're going through quite a bit of this stuff now on the encumbrances. Uh, next month, you'll see a much bigger, it'll, it'll be much different. But we're starting to chew away at this year's budget already. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions, I'll, I'll be glad to answer any, but uh, it's actually kind of early to really go into a lot on here. Um, with COVID, it threw a lot of curveballs, just to let you know, as it has all throughout the entire process. Um, we've just finished updating most of the salaries uh, because of COVID and all the new hires and movement around and things like that. So um, I do want to make you aware uh, we've added under the business offices uh, codes, I've added a 112 for COVID related personnel. I believe it was uh, 330 under professional services was added and a supplies line for COVID was added. It's, it's an unbudget, these are unbudgeted lines, but I wanna let, make you aware that uh, you may see some funky stuff appearing on here, but I will explain it uh, when you see it. Um, I wanted to be able to track our COVID expenditures through and yes, they will be unbudgeted, we are expecting, but that's one of the reasons why we're asking for the 330000 to offset those unbudgeted items that are coming in. So I just wanted to make you aware and be upfront with you that I did add three object codes to the business offices um, um, category. So, Hey, Ray, I had one, 330. What was the third one? Um, 112, 330, and... Supplies six, where is it? Um, I need better light in this office, I can tell you that much. Here, do you want me to hold a paper here so you can read it? Actually, I've got my paper. I'm, I'm holding it against the other screen. But there's not enough distance it. there. I was thinking if I held it here, you might be able to read it better. I believe it was a 630 line that's not appearing yet here. Okay. I yeah, I, I'll email you guys tomorrow and verify so you, that you're aware okay. of it. Okay. 
but I did add three objects to the business office um, structure so that you're aware. Then can we, then should we, we can't vote on it until it's a complete document maybe. You're not seeing those expenditures on, you won't see them yet. Right. Oh, fine. They're just I, I, objects. Okay. Right. It's, a, it's a snapshot in time. Can I ask a, a, a question? Um, so right, what, what would we do if, say, for example, you know, you said, uh, well, uh, we're going to be asking for 300 and so some odd dollars from um, the Board of Finance uh, in order to cover those unbudgeted expenses. And what if they say no, which they have in the past? Well, we, we've had a leadership meeting on this topic already, Bob, with with their leadership, with their chair. And we, we feel that uh, in order to communicate better, we've given them some heads up. And we, we believe that they're, they, they may feel comfortable with this, especially since they'll end up with, uh, you know, money for the town and returned as well. And actually, it's, it's more money than we had talked about when we did meet with them. So we, I have met with, you know, the uh, the leaders uh first selectman uh board of finance chair natalie welsh and myself uh and mark porter you know have discussed these things uh periodically so that we're we're not blindsided and we certainly want the board of board of finance to know where we're coming from and they certainly uh, appreciate the efforts to know ahead of time where we're coming from too so we we hope there's not going to be a problem uh, we do have another hundred and fifty thousand approximately in the uh, non occurring account that we can use uh, if we need to on top of 335. Uh, okay. if, they don't, if they don't I, want to give it to us then we're gonna have to close school the next day if we uh, if we can't operate so uh, we figure uh, we're not asking for any more money which is a good thing uh, I think we've done a great job and our office has done an excellent job with uh, budgeting and I think we're really we're in East Granby I think are really in a good place so I would expect tomorrow night the Board of Finance uh, to be happy with it. And if they're not, then you know, we'll have to look at something else. Okay, I just wanted to, to clarify that for my, my own peace of mind. Yeah, we put feelers out there. We are trying to communicate. So, uh, you know, we're, we're all in this together and it's all our tax dollars. So uh, fortunate thing, we're not asking for money. Uh, we can't do this the whole year. All, all that money we have uh, isn't gonna cover us. Uh, you know, once the winter comes, we're done. So we're really hoping that uh, with mitigation, we get a good handle on the coronavirus and can get the kids back in school and, you know, be functioning at 100% back in the building because we can't keep this hybrid going all, all year long. Okay. I'll be, I want to interject. If it goes much more than January or February, you'll run out of that non-lapsing fund right. because you're yep. going you're gonna to have to continue to support the PPE all of these unexpected expenses, we're going to have to continue to support it. So, um, right. And any reimbursement numbers you've heard from the state and federal governments, you can forget most of those numbers. Uh, nothing from FEMA and fifteen hundred dollars from FEMA, which <laughs> we had to combine that with the town. I'll be honest with you. So FEMA, wow, they were blowing smoke, so to speak. I'll be, I'll, I'll. I'll end the phrase there. Um, the town, the Missy and I had a very good conversation with uh, Kathy Dempsey with the state because we were whittled down from again. It started out about twenty, thirty thousand dollars down to sixteen, then down to fifteen, then to thirteen, and when we Missy and I looked at what we were supposed to get, it's like this. Uh, this makes no sense. There are alliance districts that already get millions of dollars getting millions more, and we're not getting anything. So we had a very long conversation with Kathy Dempsey, and she just emailed, I believe it was Friday afternoon or this morning, she just emailed her and said, you're getting 100 to 106,000, somewhere around there. So they did increase the kid. Good. 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 Not an considerable amount. We, we don't know exactly how we're getting that money yet, but we're, we're getting the funds. Wow. Well, that's good. Thank you. Well, thanks for going to bat. <laughs> uh, we had, it's like, what are we doing wrong? That's basically what we asked her. I mean, we're pinching pennies. We're shoving 2% of my budget into next year to cover expenses, and we're getting nothing in return. Mm -hmm. And I have to be careful how we spend our money 
because if we don't do it right, our MBR drops below our minimum budget requirement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we get burned again. They take more money yeah. back. And you yeah. only get a million four now. Yeah. So, well, never get more, never goes up. Nope. Nope. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the August 2020 financials? So moved. Okay, Bob, a second? Second. Second from John. Okay, any other discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried again unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and item 5D was the new one to approve. I need a motion to approve moving to September 28th, regular Board of Ed meeting, move to September 29th at 7 p.m. So moved, Bob. So move from Bob with the motion, a second? I'll second. Michelle with a second. Any other discussion or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carried unanimously again. Very, very good. Okay, item six. Any agenda items for future meetings we have out here to close out the roof projects? Anyone have any others to add to it? Bob, I had a I do have a question for Missy and for uh, Mike, our athletic director. Is there any is there any way that Mike can look into maybe in a um Maybe not a not a board of ed policy, but maybe some type of athletic department policy on senior day. Hmm. Where all seniors might get to participate. It doesn't have to be in a, a game. It could be in a uh, you know a, a, a pregame before the season. Hmm. Because uh, I know in a past few years there were issues with baseball and with tennis with some of the uh, seniors not playing are you um would that be related to any pep rallies or anything like that no i just whatever right now there's nothing that says uh, seniors cannot or seniors there's nothing that some seniors don't get to participate in the sport on senior day and i know there was a big issue on baseball a few years ago and i know there was also issues on the tennis team with that too Okay. Yeah, I'll look into it, John. I'm, I'm sure that not those are not just the same, you know, the regular those sports. I'm sure there's other issues too with other teams. So. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anything? Anything else? Anyone have? Okay. We'll we'll certainly find some to put on the agenda for you without a problem. Okay. <laughs> uh, any comments from visitors re about the meeting? Any comments from our visitors? We still have visitors. We still have 27. Um, Patrick McHenry. Hand up from, you'll get Pat McKinney. Yep. Uh, oh, that, they got me. There we go. Yeah, you're on your uh, oh, good. Uh, just quick question and then a comment. If it, uh, with the capital plan, is the, uh, a couple meetings ago, we were talking about the possibility of the irrigation on the three, or two or three fields on the high school. Is that still in there or yes, talking about? We have that for 21-22, am I correct with that? Yeah, yeah. we haven't removed that. We've got okay. that for year 21-22, the irrigation for baseball, softball fields. But okay. Bob, we also should note it that it's 2006, so the price may need to go up. Oh, yeah, no, no question, the price will probably go up. Yeah, yeah and... Um, <laughs> Uh, Mike actually is getting quotes. So Mike has been okay. making some contacts for I'm quotes. We can update that. My only, right, just my input on that, uh, being out there and mowing those fields uh, since we took over town from Twin, um, if you're going to do the baseball and the softball, that soccer field up top is about as rough. And if you look at the time of year, the time of the year the kids use the fields, usually even though uh, with the baseball field and the softball field, they use those usually in the spring. And by the time the winter comes back around, we do get some growth back, but they would be using that soccer field usually right now if things were a lot more if it was normal. And that soccer field is just starting to show some signs of, <laughs> if you call it growth. <laughs> um, and it's probably the worst I've seen it in, and every summer seems to get worse and worse. I mean, we didn't have to mow that baseball field for almost a month and a half because there was just nothing on it. 
Um, and my other suggestion would just be maybe to look at getting a couple quotes. Um, if you go down to Granbrook Park and you go to East Granby Farms where they pay someone to come in and add material to the infields and work those differently than Twin does, um, a lot of your dust problems you have down on the baseball field and softball field, there's really no material left at all in those infields. Um, it's almost like playing on sand. Um, if you go up to, like I said, check those two parks out, um, it's a completely different uh, setup. So it might just be something worth looking at what the dollar amount might be. Maybe it's a one-time thing to have someone come in to put the material back in and then just have someone come and maintain it throughout the year. But they're really getting to the point where there's nothing nothing left in them. So I guess just that aspect. And then, too, if you're going to do those two fields, you really should look at doing the soccer field because um, – they would be using it now where our high school teams really aren't using those other two fields till the springtime. Um, and they usually come back a little bit. They're, they're getting worse. Um, and there's been some money wasted on, not wasted, but, um, you know, when you overseeded those fields and we put, you know, fertilizer, natural fertilizer on them, when you're doing that to brown dead grass, it's not really going to accomplish very much. So that was it. Thank you. I appreciate your points. Uh, those are Thank those you. Thank you very points. much. And you're right. Grass isn't grass seed won't grow if it's not watered. And those fields do get used extensively by certainly the community and by the school during our seasons. And and one good thing is the water that goes out through the main line is right in the middle between the soccer field, softball, and baseball. So for them to do all three at once would probably be the most efficient way to look at it. So thank you, Pat, and, and thank you for the great job you guys do. I think the fields. Uh, thank you. Yeah. The rain this year they'd be looking terrific, but they they have looked much better than the way they've been taken care of in the past. And I think uh, the guys from town taking care of them take a little more pride in it. We appreciate it, and certainly some water on them would keep them from being a dust ball. <laughs> not much to mow up there now. Okay, thank you. I see someone else, Ray. Ashley Alexander. Hi, how's the, how are you doing? Hi, Ashley. Um, I have a comment and a question. Um, so my comment, just as a, from the perspective of a Seymour parent, I just really want to say great job to all of the staff and administration. Um, I was really unsure how hybrid was going to be and just the balance between them being able to teach in person and online simultaneously. I was so impressed. So thank you, everybody. Um, my question, and maybe this will be discussed more on the 29th at that meeting, is are, is there any more information regarding reopening five days a week, transitioning from hybrid? Are we still leaning towards that for October, or, or is it still too early to, um, to even look at that? That's the plan, Ashley, but you know as well as we do. <laughs> now and then, but that certainly is uh, what we're focusing on and we hope the metrics uh, can keep us on that direction. Uh, we certainly want to get everyone back together as well. Great, thank you. Nothing thank new you. on it. Thank you. thank you very much. Okay, seeing anyone else, Ray? I don't see any. That's it. Okay, can I get a motion for adjournment? So moved. Okay, Bob with a motion, second. John with a second, any, no discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Abstentions. Motion carried again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight.